Praise the Lord. Thank you, worship team. Appreciate these folks. You know, a church cannot do anything without volunteers. And if we didn't have all these faithful people working, we wouldn't know what to do. And I got no requests to sing this morning, so I guess I don't have to. Right, Roll. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Oh, Mary, you got the PowerPoint? All right. We're in good shape this morning. Amen. We had, uh... you know, I like to let you out on time. But today, I, uh, I want to, I was, you know, pastors spend all week praying about what God wants them to share. And uh, it's, it's, it's not a Saturday thing. And uh, you read books and you study and you do all kinds of things. And today I, I just felt like God wanted me to talk about worship. And, and in many circles, worship has become, um, if you will, modified by a lot of people in the way they look at it. And, and it's just, um, God's Word tells us what worship is. And it's, I believe when worship becomes a show, You've lost your worship. Yeah. And, and we have to dis, we have to discuss what it is. First of all, who we are worshiping. And how the Bible tells us to worship. Because that's a key. And without those keys, um, um, we lose our focus and lose our correction. And there are places that, um, uh, if you will, the show starts and uh, everything is choreographed and, and put in place. And I don't think excellence is bad. But when it becomes watching something instead of participating in it, then there's kind of a problem. Amen? Amen. I hope you're with me on that. And, and so the Bible says, uh, worship at all times. Amen. I got this cheap little laser pointer. <laughs> Hallelujah, it still works. The blood cells are getting weak, but they're still functioning. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continue with me in my mouth. Amen. I will bless the Lord. When do we bless the Lord? All times. All times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast of the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. And let us exalt his name together. Let's look at those two verses. Uh, my soul, you are spirit, which is largely your emotional self. There's your soul, that's your desires your identity, who you are, and there's your body, that's the part you're gonna leave behind someday. Okay, so our soul, our identity, should be told, bless the Lord. I want you to understand something. You tell your soul, bless the Lord. Your soul does not tell you, 
Your emotions don't tell you. When you say, Brother Stoll, you're taking all the fun out of it. No, we are blessed, and when we feel blessed, we should praise the Lord. But I want to tell you something. Sometimes we don't feel blessed, and we need to praise the Lord anyway. And sometimes you've got to tell your soul, and this is something that people don't understand. You've got to tell your soul, sit down, shut up, and bless the Lord. Amen. But I don't like the projection equipment. They didn't sing my favorite song. It doesn't say anything in here about style. I bet if David was here and played his harp, you'd have a hard time worshiping with it. But God was pleased with it. Come on. But God was pleased with it. We were down in Tapachula, Mexico. Bill was a part of our church then, I believe. And and they assembled the band, and people wondered, well, why don't you hire professional singers? And there's a reason. Number one, professional singers don't always worship. In fact, they rarely do. And number two, I need professional offerings to be in the basket to hire professional singers. <laughs> but that's another subject that I'm not preaching on today. <laughs> when, when we come into the place, and, and we were in top of chill, I got a baptism of fire. I was pastoring a church so small, that when I said, dearly beloved, the ladies would blush. <laughs> um, we were, um, <laughs> we were in a small church and I just had a handful of people. And when one of them feels called to lead the music, it's hard to say no. I should have followed my dad's advice and said, I would leave it. That's what I should have done. And I was dying and borrowing piano players from every direction. Finally had to marry one to get her to stay. <laughs> and, and we we had um Bless her heart, she was a good Sunday school teacher. But she could not carry two. And it was hard. It was hard. I used to get my trumpet and play it behind her to try to move her back on the note. <laughs> but her heart was worshiping. See, there's a difference in whether there's heart worship. We're going to go back to Tapachula now. <laughs> We're jumping ahead in time, about 25 years or so. Yeah, I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> and, and we were down there and they assembled a, a band. And the drummer... Um, usually, on a set of drums, you keep the beat with the bass drum. This drummer kept the beat with a cowbell. <laughs> clang, 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 clang. See, I had to tell my soul, bless the Lord. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? There is a 
a a difficulty that we have anytime we get into a different environment, a different place, a different mode, and we say, well, I'm not used to that. And you know, I've, I've been around long enough. I, around, I grew up where the only songs that we sung were in a book. And, and then there were the gospel quartets. And there were sermons against those quartets. <laughs> Some of you have been around long enough. And then the Jesus People movement showed up. Late 60s quartets, performances, and people enjoyed it. And there's nothing wrong with enjoying your worship, by the way. Amen. Amen. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Worship is supposed to be a happy experience. Amen. 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 And, and so, so that cowbell was going. It was hard to focus. It was also hard to sing in Spanish, but that was that cowbell really did the trick. <laughs> and, and sometimes you have to decide that you are going to allow your soul and your spirit to worship the Lord, whether it's what you're used to or not. Because if you go to a different town, to a different church, to a different denomination, different something, I, I, there was a family reunion that we were involved with, and it was Sunday morning, and I looked across the park, and I saw a little Baptist church over there, and I ran over there because I just wanted to be in the house of the Lord on Sunday morning. There was a desire in my heart that I was going to worship the Lord, that I was going to be with God's people in God's house. And sometimes when you're hungry enough, you don't care what the food tastes like. <laughs> Come on. And when you're hungry for the Lord, there's a draw in your spirit for the heart of God to feel His presence, to experience a relationship with him to be able to have more than just an exercise of singing but to experience a personal contact with his presence and to feel that presence of the living God I've got something here and I really am not able I don't think I may try you guys have Keep this mic on. I can only partially demonstrate this uh, without setting up an electronic circuit. This is a tuning fork. Let's see if you can hear it. But if I hold this other tuning fork near it, I can strike the one. And the other one will vibrate because it's in proximity. I can, and because it's weaker, I can't put it on the microphone here, but this one, I can hear it faintly. We'll make the other one vibrate. What is it about these two tuning forks? Same wavelength. They're in resonance with one another. They resonate at the same frequency. In this case, 440 hertz. But because the resonance is the same, when one resonates close to the next one, it transfers 
energy. Now, that's in the physical world, but in the spiritual world, it works much the same way. Because when one person gets into worship, there is a resonance of the Holy Spirit that transfers. See, God made the law of physics and he makes the laws of spirituality. It's the same author. And, and when we get tuned to the frequency of worship, we can enter in spiritually to something that that person over on the other side of the church is getting into. Amen. And a lot of times when that happens in Matthew 18, we have the scripture that says, if two of you on earth shall agree as touching anything they shall ask, Amen. it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Amen. That word in the Greek, <coughs> symphoneo, is the same word we get symphony from. What is the first thing you hear before a concert? A bunch of tuning going on. And you hear all these notes coming from behind the curtain. And you do it because if you have a music teacher like I used to have, you don't want to get impaled with a baton. <laughs> <laughs> I think he went through about three of them every semester. <laughs> That's a side story. But when we have a resonance going on, and the presence of God is in a place which he is because it also says right next to that verse if two or three are gathered together in my name there I am in the midst of them and, and when we learn to tune in to the Lord and see you can tune in to God whether or not the cowbell is ringing You may not like the cowbell. I, it was affecting timing-wise, but in my opinion, it wasn't too musical. I'm not anti-excellence because I believe we should do the very best that we can for God, whatever it was. And Sister Henrietta was doing her absolute best. See, I couldn't criticize her heart of worship. Amen. Mm. Hallelujah. So the next slide goes along the same way. Um, you bless him with your soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Worship is supposed to be a total experience. Which means, if you really want to experience God, you've got to forget about who's on X or Facebook. And you've got to tune in to God's Holy Spirit. Say, God, speak to my heart today. God, I want to hear your voice in my life. I want your direction. 
I want your guidance for my life. I want to hear what you have to say. But in order to do that, we have to bless the Lord, spirit, soul, and body to enter in. John, in John 4, 24, we see this story of Jesus talking to the woman at the well. We think she was somewhat of a social outcast, both because of what happened to her and also because of the fact that she was drawing water in the middle of the day. But Jesus said this, God is spirit. And those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We have to worship and allow ourselves to love the Lord. Now, there's a lot of disappointments in life. There are things that we want to happen that sometimes don't happen. Yesterday we had a funeral and we prayed a lot for Carol to be healed. We did not get what we wanted. But we have to worship the Lord in any regard because God had a plan for Carol that we didn't have. And she wasn't failing God. And she wasn't in secret sin. And she didn't do anything wrong. She was believing for her healing. And we all were believing for her healing. But it didn't work out that way. But nevertheless, you've got to bless and praise God. Amen. Find one of the most beautiful examples of this is in the case of David when he and Bathsheba had a baby. And it was sick and David prayed for it and fasted and it died. And the first thing David did is he got up and washed himself and went to the house of God and praised the Lord. You say that's tough. Yeah, it's tough to praise the Lord when you're disappointed with life and what has happened it's tough. But sacrificial worship is true worship. See, we don't like that word sacrifice. But when you're in a difficult situation and you in that situation worship God, you are given an ability to worship God in a situation that likely you will never again have a chance to offer that form of sacrifice again. You follow what I'm saying? Because it's sacrificial to worship God when things aren't going your way. It's sacrificial when you're disappointed and life is blowing up all around you and you don't know what you're going to do and you worship the Lord in spite of the disappointment. You catch God's attention. Amen. Amen. Um, We worship the Lord with singing, 1 Chronicles 16, 23. I've got to get through this. 
Sing to the Lord all the earth. Proclaim the good news of his salvation from day to day. Singing is a part of the worship experience. No way around it. Then uh, Psalms 88, or 96 I guess it is. I'm sorry. I've gotten to the place I need glasses. <laughs> oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Oh! Wait a minute. Only the hymns are anointed. <laughs> Those overhead prayer choruses are not from God. <laughs> Sing to the Lord a new song. We should be constantly my microphone's got a mind of its own. We, we should be constantly learning new ways to worship the Lord and in new experiences in life. Regardless of what's given us, we should continuously teach ourselves. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 Everything give thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. The continual offering of praise. One of the things that David instituted was the continual burnt offering. And he set up a tent as a tabernacle before Solomon's temple was built. And he appointed singers to sing songs and he developed new instruments. Oh my goodness. They've got a bass guitar in the church. Can you believe such a thing as that? <laughs> drums. I remember when drums were a no-no. But see, David broke the rules to worship God with all of his heart, with all of his mind, with all of his soul, with all of his strength, because it was not for him. We were at a worship conference and uh, the speaker said an interesting thing. He says, you know, when, when I go fishing, he says, I carry worms with me. The worms are not for me. <laughs> They're for the fish. <laughs> the worms are for the fish. Well, why do you use worms? Because the fish like it. <coughs> Why do we praise the Lord? Because He likes it. Amen. But it's not my style. But are they worshiping God? Is the question we need to ask. And you know, over the years, I worshiped the Lord with hymns. I worshiped the Lord with quartets. I worship the Lord with praise choruses. And I worship the Lord with new songs. And every one is a unique experience in the Lord. I went on the internet and found some old um, praise album CD. I, I have some of those big CDs at the house. They're this <laughs> big. <laughs> <laughs> they run a 33 and a third RPM. <laughs> and I used to have some 78s, but they made them with things that break easy, and so I no longer have my 78s. Can't remember who it was. 
I used to love listening to that song, This Old House. And it is no secret what God can do. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Um, someday, everybody's going to worship. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. <laughs> There's coming a day. <laughs> <laughs> There's some people that I heard on the on the news or someplace that said this knee isn't bowing. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you not only are gonna bow, you're probably gonna be flat on your face. Yeah. <laughs> you just wait till you experience Jesus in his fullness and, and you're gonna bow. Amen. And someday every knee's gonna bow. And I, I think the church should be at the vanguard, at the head of the line of those that will worship. Um, Romans 12 makes an interesting statement. He says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. Worship should be sacrificial in its nature. And worship isn't all in a church service, by the way. Sometimes giving is worship. Um, we have the story here in 2 Samuel 24. And what, it, what happened was David had numbered Israel and God was judging Israel. And they saw the judgment angel in the sky about ready to strike yet again. And, and at that moment in time, David looked up and he saw that over the threshing floor of Verona, the Jebusite. And he ran up there seeing the angel and he said, I need to make a sacrifice and I need to do it now. Now you say, what does that have to do with us? Folks, sometimes a sacrificial act will break a situation going on in your life. And this is an act of worship most people don't have any idea of. But when disaster is about to strike, that's a good time to sacrificially worship the Lord. And he worshiped, and he came up to Runan, and, and Runan says, the same situation. He says, here's the wood of the the plows and the yokes and the oxen and the oxen, hurry up, do the sacrifice. And David says, no, I will not offer the Lord something without it costing me. You see, we've gotten into the age where the laser lights go on and the band is striking up and we want we want to have the music bless us. But we don't want to sacrifice in our worship. It's getting quiet in here. <laughs> and Arun says, I give it to you. Just take it. Just take it. Just take it. David says, no. He says, I'm going to weigh you out 50 shekels of silver. I'm going to pay you full price for everything. Because I will not offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing. A lot of people don't give offerings. They give God tips. 
<laughs> now it's going to get quiet. <laughs> but see, in doing that, you see, you see, what does sacrifice look at, Brother Stoll? Well, it looks at scraping the benches of the gazebo area. It looks like weed whacking with the weed whacker. It looks like trimming the hedges and the bushes. It, it looks like not being the first one in line at the potluck. I have no idea who it was. Okay. So. <laughs> it looks like the person that stays afterwards to put up the chairs and tables. It looks like the one that was doing the dishes in the kitchen sink while everybody else was enjoying the meal. What does sacrifice look like? It's the person who sees the kids stomp crackers in the carpet and runs back and grabs the vacuum real quick and takes care of it. It's the person that comes early to church to pray because he, they want the blessing of the Lord on the service. It's the ones that say, oh, well, tonight's prayer meeting, I don't think I'll go. They show up anyway. And by the way, tonight's prayer. <laughs> and, and you, you know, I... I used to work with a guy that that would come in on the beginning whistle at the mine. And he would try to sneak out five or ten minutes early to go home. You all have a name in your mind, right? I don't want to get there two minutes ahead of time. But when you're wanting to give God a sacrifice of praise and worship, you want to show up early. And you want to pray afterwards. And you want to be able to be there when it's needed. It's the one that's there when everybody else isn't there. And it doesn't matter because you're there. Because you're looking forward to what's going to happen before the service. And after service you want to stay around for the afterglow. Of God's presence. I know it's quiet, but I'm telling you good things. I'm telling you things that will bless you. I'm telling things that will give you an identity with Christ. I'm giving you things that will allow you to experience God in a real and deeper way than you have before. And we try to be efficient in every way, and Lord knows at the grocery store you have to be efficient. You can't get a bag of groceries for $20 anymore. And I remember when we complained when it cost $20. <laughs> but David learned the key. How many of you know God loved David? Yeah. And, uh, and there was a reason. Because David did things out of his heart because he wanted to worship God in yet greater ways than he'd ever worshipped God before. 
And I want to consider, I want you to consider something today. We've flown to the moon, we've done a lot of things, but what would happen in your life if you started worshiping God in yet a greater way and more sacrifice? What if you read 10 chapters in the Bible all at one time? Wow. You said, that's a lot, Brother Storm. Well, after a while, it's not so much. See, to explore what God will do in and through your life as you pursue Him. To learn the pursuit of the living God. Ah. Amen. Well, I pray today. I see. We have sacrificial. It says to worship the Lord in holiness. Amen. I, I think this is obvious, but you, if you're coming in to worship and you want the Lord to receive your worship, you should get your life squared away. And repent of whatever's going on that you know God's displeased with. And then finally, worshiping. Oh, come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms. You may not be an opera singer, but you can always make a joyful noise. Because God's looking for heart worship, not exterior performance. Aren't you glad? <laughs> Let's stand together. And uh, Lord, we just come before you this morning. And God, I believe with all my heart, everybody in this room wants to experience you. That's why they came to church. And hopefully that was the motivation behind it. And Lord, I pray today that God, they would experience your Holy Spirit. And God, as they seek your face, would you be especially real to their life. And let them experience your love and your salvation and the wonders of all that you are. God, we pray today that, God, you would help us. You would help us to worship and to serve you in a way that pleases you. And Lord, maybe there's somebody here that's seeking this morning and doesn't really know you as Lord and Savior. And Lord, we don't want them to miss it. And so, Lord, we pray together to Lord Jesus. We ask you to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us, Lord, and make us clean again. Lord, make us your children. Let us experience you. We believe that Jesus, Lord Jesus, died for our sins and was raised again that we would have hope of eternal life. And Lord, we ask you to receive us as your children. In Jesus' name. Amen. Can you say amen? Amen. And we're going to have people up here to pray for you as we close the service. And if you don't know Jesus or have a relationship with him, we'd like you to come and pray with us. And let us introduce you to an experience with the Lord like you've never had. God bless you and thank you for being here.